we're going to go through a very difficult scenario where we have a Wells Fargo employee who died, who passed away. So in this video, we're going to go through a very difficult scenario of a Wells Fargo employee who actually passed away while working their job and were not picked up and noticed until four days later. So apparently they were working in an office at Wells Fargo in a part of the office that wasn't typically used that often by many employees. So they were working, they passed out, they passed away. Company didn't pick up on it, security didn't, the CCTV cameras and the security guards didn't notice, the cleaners didn't notice, and she was rotting there for four days before the company found out and addressed the matter. So let's go through it. Let's try and understand what exactly was going on here. So we see that a woman was working at Wells Fargo in Arizona. They passed away while they were working and were not found until four days later. This woman's name was Denise. Um, she'd been working at 7 a.m. onwards on August 16th, um, passed away, and she wasn't found until August 20th. So four days and security found her after four days. So what was security doing? Did they just walk past her desk and think she was okay? I mean, if she'd passed out, she'd either had, you know, have fallen on her desk or in the back of her seat. So how can they not pick up that she was clearly, you know, no longer alive? So it's kind of weird. Then you've got this crazy scenario where it says employees at the bank began to suspect something was off when they began to notice a foul smell and they thought it was the plumbing. So this is how degrading it can be in a workplace environment if you do pass away there, right? You're told, oh, te one teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, you know, the company's one big happy family and things like that. Of course, that's not the case, but you'd expect to have some level of dignity. Now, there's no dignity really offered to these employees. You know, they're passing away at the desk. It's crazy, right? It's completely crazy. It shows you how complete disregard how much disregard they have for you, right? And if you look back at some of my other videos, I do cover scenarios like this of people in the finance industry jumping off of buildings. There was an incident when an employee working at a major investment bank passed away at their desk, a male employee, this is a female employee. Uh, so it's kind of crazy how, they, how you're treated with like such little respect, particularly when you're overextending yourself working your job to, to kind of do well in that particular field, right? So here it says one employee said they were sickened by the thought of their co-workers bodies sitting there for days in their cubicle. So essentially what it is, is you have really negligence here, right? You have another employee here saying they were furious. Uh, it took them four days to find her and they call it negligence, right? So you've got employees who are really annoyed with this because they can imagine that was them. That could be themselves. They could be the next employee who pass away and no one finds out for four days. And then it mentions the company gives us their standard garbage, Wells Fargo company, corporate PR statement. Our thoughts and prayers are with the family. During this difficult time, we're able to support our employees and we're fully cooperating with the department, uh, with the investigation and so on. But this doesn't change the fact that you're an employee working for you, dedicating the vast majority of their wake waking hours every week, perhaps for years, I don't know how long she's been working there, but imagine she's a long-term employee, she's been working there over a decade, putting in all these hours for a job that kind of doesn't care about her, that sees her as replaceable, and in her moment of passing away, basically doesn't notify, doesn't notice this for over, um, four days. I mean, I don't know what was going on in her personal life. Maybe her family didn't know that she was, she effectively wasn't there for four days. I don't know what's going on. Maybe she was living alone or she didn't have family connections, but this is how wild it can get in this type of sick corporate environment. So what we're going to do, we're going to listen to a few additional details um, that really make us think about and wake us up to the kind of corporate lies we've been sold about how toxic these workplace environments are in the finance industry and overall and how you can kind of plan ahead and understand how little these companies value you. August 20th, four days later, Denise's boss sent her an email. When Denise didn't respond, other employees went to check on her. Her boss had emailed her. He didn't receive a response. So they went to go check where she normally sits and that's how they found the body. Tempe police say on August 20th, building security called authorities after finding a worker who was possibly dead. Now you would think in a modern world. So, one point here is that, you know, her boss had sent her some work, they didn't get a response, and then people started to think what was going on, right? Now, it's like, 
If imagine if your last task before you pass away is responding to a boss's email or missing their email, or the only way they go and notice and check your desk is because you didn't respond to a manager's email, even though you're at the desk and they don't understand why. It shows you how disposable you are. You're like completely worthless. You're like a just like a cog in a machine, right? So is that your worth? Is that a good end of life story? You know, people have these visions of maybe they're towards the end of their life. They're spending time maybe in nature, living in a, in a, like that scene in Godfather, you might remember with Don Corleone, where he's there with his son and their grandson and they're just relaxing and he's like in a vineyard. That's how people might envision their last few moments, right? Or with their family in some sense. But this is how the culture of workism, the culture of just work is everything. People don't really have strong family ties. Lots of people not in relationships. And I don't know this person's personal life and I don't want to speak ill of the dead. But if someone was missing for four days and no one picked up on them in terms of family members contacting her employer, um, that must mean that maybe she was living alone and people didn't know uh, about her not being around because she didn't have a family member checking up on her. So this is how wild it can really get, you know, people are just, their life becomes work, they have no real free time, no real family or relationship connections, and then they pass away one day after being a slave to a company for their whole life. And that's why you need to plan ahead in your career so you don't end up in this scenario. The employee says several people had smelled a foul odor, but passed it off as faulty plumbing. They say while most Wells Fargo employees at this Tempe location work remote, the building has 24-7 security. Okay, so let's talk about some potential legal ramifications for Wells Fargo. First off, there's a possible negligence claim here. When you think about it, the workplace has a duty to take care and ensure the safety and well-being of its employees. Wells Fargo failure to notice that one of the employees was not only missing, but dead and sitting at their desk for four days could lead to a breach of that duty. This employee wants to see new safety protocols in place, telling me, quote, it's negligence in some part. A different worker also spoke with 12 News anonymously. It was just uncomfortable. Again, calling on the company to do more. So this is how bad it can get, right? So the fact that people didn't really notice until there was a bad smell. And as I say, if you're if you're if you're seen as a part of the furniture, you're seen as just like, like this inconvenient worker that they have to tolerate to get work done and you pass away and people think, oh, it's because there's a plumbing issue. It really is showing how little they do value you. And also, you know, it shows the damage control the company's going to have. They're going to come up with some garbage excuse. Oh, the security didn't go there because they thought she was busy. The cleaners didn't notice because they thought she was working. They didn't want to bother her desk. Uh, bother her at her desk. Uh, why was there no first aid checks? W what was going on here, right? This is this type of incident. It might sound like a one-off, but it's going to become more and more common. Someone might pass away at work or something, and because they're kind of isolated and there is a epidemic of loneliness, an epidemic of people living these isolated lives, they might pass away in their uh, one-bedroom apartment and no one notices. They might pass away at work or or on the street and no one will just notice because everyone's kind of isolated. Everyone's in this hyper-competitive environment. And this is the sad reality of people at the end of their life, you know, in this type of culture. It just doesn't show signs that, that society is going to end well. And I'm not saying everyone has to live in this tight-knit community, but what you can see here is kind of the boss didn't care to check up on her. The security didn't care to check up on her. They only picked up on her when she didn't respond and picked up and noticed that she had passed away after the boss didn't receive a response to her email, even though they thought she would be at work four days later. She, she like passes away on a Friday and they notice on Tuesday because they don't get a response to a boss's email. That's how ridiculous it is. And that's why when you read in between the lines of this news story, what actually happened was that it wasn't that oh, we just didn't notice because security didn't go there. And we thought the bad smell of a rotting body, a rotting corpse, we thought it was the plumbing. The real the point here is that they only picked up on her passing away when she didn't respond to a manager's email from Friday on Tuesday, a couple of days later. They didn't pick up on that until Tuesday. So that's how ridiculous and how low value you will be treated in a corporate job. Even at a big brand name company like Wells Fargo, you think they're going to treat employees well. But as I say, that's not the case in the past. For instance, this Forbes article talks about how a tax auditor died at his desk and he wasn't found for two days. He also happened to be 60 years old.
Or this story how a New Yorker died on the subway and passengers didn't notice for five hours. And just like the dead rider in New York, same thing happened in Washington, D.C. Metro officials in Washington, D.C. are investigating how a man who died on a subway train was able to remain on the train for nearly five hours. Ricky Van Houter got on at the Twinbrook station at 10 o'clock Monday morning. The train went out of service a couple of hours later, but despite a visual inspection by the operator, the man's body was not seen. Have somebody dead on the train, it's like you're not doing your job, so I don't know. I just feel like he got let down. It was not until 3 o'clock when the train went back into service that Howder's body was noticed. My heart goes out to his family, you know. It's it's a terrible thing to happen, you know. I just, I just gets a hold of the situation. No. So, as you can see here, you know, another situation, a shady situation at Shady Grove, right, on the red line. So, this is how you're treated as an employee, right? In many jobs, not just corporate jobs, subway jobs and things like that, right? You're seen as kind of invisible. You're invisible. All that is is that you get the work done. You're just an expense item, a line item in the Excel file of expenses for that company. Security, CCTV, cleaners don't notice. They don't care about you. And the same way you're treated at work, you're, you're almost treated like in the society too. It's always like people think, what can you do to benefit them? We live in a very transactional society where people want to leverage you to benefit their own life. And it's really not going to end well when you have transactional relationships like this. You have this ends, right, in this kind of sad end of life scenario. And you should always think about, you know, this society wants to hold you accountable to get loads of work done, to do works for the boss, manage all your work items, respond to all these emails and stuff. But you're really treated in a very disposable way. So it's like, that's why I'd encourage you. And my main one of my messages is to really treat the company as disposable as they treat you. So if the company sees you, if the company sees you as disposable, then you should see the company as disposable to you too, because there's no point you overvaluing the company and them undervaluing you to such a large extent. And if you're under underappreciated, as you are, and as many people watching this surely are in your job, you should just bear in mind this could be you. You're feeling underappreciated in your job. You could be the next person in this type of scenario. And just bear in mind how little they value you at your company. And just that's why you should kind of take my advice about not overvaluing the company you work for and your job, given how disposable they do see you. And it's an important lesson that health is wealth, right? At the end of the day, you've got to look out for your health and the job comes second to whatever benefits you and your health. And it's a reminder, final thing, is that if you're not feeling well, as I say, dedicate the time to your health, taking a sick day if you need to, that's all important things. Or taking an extra mental health day if you have those at your company, where you can take some extra time to do less work and focus on yourself. Because if you do that over the course of your life, maybe you can avoid these type of stress scenarios, scenarios where you end up neglecting relationships, ending your life essentially due to some kind of health issue, unexpected at your desk during your, your time working there. So really look out for your best interest. Don't look out for the company best interest. It's a sad story. If you wanna think about your career path more carefully, how you wanna navigate that, particularly as I say, with how disposable these companies see you as, feel free to reach out to me at the link in the description. We can talk it through and plan your life ahead. So hopefully you have an early retirement and you're not at your desk at an older age because this interesting story here, she mentions she was 60 years old, right? She was working, which what sounds like maybe a stressful corporate job at the age of 60. Now, if you're doing that at the age of 60, it really suggests, I don't know her personal scenario, but you know, if you take the right career path, you save and invest, you can retire early and avoid the situation where you are in an office still working every day to make ends meet. It's a difficult scenario. Thinking about and planning your career in your 20s and your 30s much earlier in life will help you avoid that. So thanks for listening and there are two recommended videos on your screen right now. I'll see you next time.